Peace everyone, Unmask Art here. Welcome back to another drawing journal. As you can see, I'm just going to be doodling this little tropical fish, so let's get right into it. All right, everyone. Hello. Welcome back. Um, so I didn't really have much much planned for this, this live stream, as you can tell by the title. Uh, I'm just going to be doodling a little bit and playing around with some bright colors on this tone tanned sketchbook and that's pretty much it i have uh, i have a few videos that i'm trying to get through editing because of the live streams that i did last week last week was just so much fun i live streamed every single day monday tuesday wednesday thursday and friday uh, Wednesday was the painting of the bird that I'm still not quite sure what kind of bird it was. Thursday was the really, really fun soft pastel live stream with the, uh, the beach scene. And then, of course, everybody that came over on Facebook or Instagram saw the surprise part of that drawing, which was the addition of the uh, woman standing on the beach. And then... Um, Friday was a Patreon tutorial, and I'll, I have the I'll have the the time lapse of both the Tuesday Patreon tutorial and the Friday Patreon tutorial coming out soon. Um, Tuesdays will be actually on this Wednesday. I, I know I'm just gonna throw out a bunch of days, and it's gonna get really confusing. So I'm just going to forget that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hello Chrissy. Yes, a little bit more. Uh, playing with my polychromos pencils. Uh, let me try to find a color really quick. Um, I'm just going to grab some bright green here. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to be doodling this for a little bit, and uh, that's about it. Um, this past week has just been fantastic. I have eight new uh, supporters over on Patreon, and I'm just I'm so ecstatic about the the way things have been moving along the past few months. It's just been so encouraging and so exciting. Um, and I've, I've gotten a lot of new subscribers to my channel. So if you are new to my channel, and maybe this is even the first time that you've watched one of my drawing journals, basically what the drawing journal is, is me just doing a live stream where I draw whatever stuff you can ask me all kinds of questions and it's just a, a a really fun time where we all just hang out and I draw stuff that's basically it and uh, the time varies sometimes it's an hour sometimes it's two hours I've even had a live stream that was like four hours before so uh, there's really no no um, time limit with these live streams I basically do it until I can't talk no more uh, hello, Raph, um, Anne, NWB. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm glad you came by the live stream. Yes, morning, afternoon. I can't even keep track of it. it right now, it's it's uh, two o'clock in my afternoon. So I've I've been working most of the day on editing videos and just kind of getting um, getting some things in order over on Patreon as well. I'm looking to do another tutorial over there this Friday, so um, uh, hello Moni, uh, thanks for coming by the, the live stream, glad to see you here. And yes, I am just um, doodling this little fish here, uh, really I was just inspired by the bright colors of it and hopefully let me zoom in a little bit for you guys so you can get a little bit better picture of what I'm doing yeah so uh, I'm just taking my sweet time with this fish and uh, having fun with it uh, I'm not taking this drawing really serious in any regard um, just uh, doing it for for a bit of fun really and you know, continues continuing to uh, test out my polychromos pencils a bit. I'm I'm really enjoying these pencils, and I wanted to, I really wanted to test them out on this paper here. 
um, uh, because I wanted to think about potentially uh, doing you know a more serious drawing on the toned paper uh, switching out from my my prismacolors for the polychromos because I like I, I'm liking the way that these these pencils are going on this paper and showing up in their blendability and the smoothness that I'm getting from it. Um, how long will I be coloring for? Really, I have no idea. Probably at least an hour, so somewhere along that time. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I really have no set time. As long as people ask me questions and give me something fun to talk about, uh, I will be on the live stream for at least for at least an hour. You know, I, I'm not really gonna uh, get off the live stream uh, before that because the amount of time it takes me to set up and make sure everything's working well, um, I'd rather I'd rather go for at least an hour if I'm going to go through all the trouble of setting up and stuff like that. So that's pretty much. That's pretty much how long I'm going to be on the live stream. Now, one of the things that uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of doing here is, if you notice, my fish doesn't have any scales right now, and uh, the reason that is is because I'm doing I'm doing a technique that I covered over on Patreon, which is called frequency separation, and I don't know if it's a I, I don't know if it's exactly a technical term on the art side of things, but I know it is on the photography side of things. And if you're familiar with the term, then you know that it is the it is it is working with uh, colors and texture separately. So you you ignore all the texture and you only worry about the colors, and then you add those two together to create the the uh, final image. And so basically, what I'm doing here is uh, is just looking at the lightest of all the colors that occur on the fish and then what I'll do is I'll take the darker colors and add in the texture afterwards uh, so have I been able to do my color chart with the polychromos yes actually that is the very first thing that I did once I got my uh, polychromos. I have my color chart right over here. In fact, I'll grab it because I just have it hanging on my wall. But yeah, here's my here's my color chart for my polychromos, all 120 of them. It looks very similar to my, my other color charts because I uh, I have all the measurements pretty much identical to my other color charts. So uh, I considered actually doing uh, one of my drawing journals as, you know, doing the color chart as the drawing journal because I did that when I got my, my Liquitex Basic Paints. But I thought that uh, it might have been a little overkill because um, I, I tortured everybody for like three hours one day doing the color chart. Um, for the Liquitex Basics, so I thought that I'd just go ahead and do it off camera and get it done and and then just get back to coloring <laughs> for everybody's benefit. But other than that, um, I don't have a whole lot planned. So if you guys have any ideas for what you'd like to see me draw in the future, uh, Feel free to let me know because I am I am interested in uh, doing what you guys uh, would like to see, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. I I have a couple drawings somewhat planned um, for the future. I am still waiting for my camera to be repaired. Uh, honestly, it's it's kind of getting on my nerves because I miss it so much, and uh, I've only been I've been taking pictures with my iPad, which is like not 
the ideal camera um, but the pictures have been coming out okay I've been trying to get good lighting and then of course I try to color correct them the best that I can in Photoshop before posting them and whatnot but it is a it is just an unfortunate waiting period of time for my camera to return to me so yeah I'm hoping that I will get it this week or at the latest like early next week I really can't imagine them taking any longer with with my camera I don't know uh, how much longer they really need they said it was only gonna be a couple days for uh, my camera to be actually repaired and uh, so I'm just still just waiting so hopefully that will come back to me very soon because I want to start recording my introduction to pastel tutorial that I've been talking about for the past couple weeks and I can't do that without my regular video recording camera so yeah So, hopefully everybody had a nice weekend. I My weekend was pretty good. Uh, I made a cake. Uh, I usually make cakes, actually. Um, I made chocolate cake, chocolate vegan cake um, for my lovely wife. And we watched, what movie? We watched that movie Split. Well, I watched it. She more or less just slept there. But uh, yeah, we watched that Split movie that came out not too long ago, and it was all right. It was a it was a pretty interesting movie, not like the uh, most wonderful thing in the world. Honestly, I was a I was tiny bit disappointed in the 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 twist. I guess you could say at the end of the movie. I won't spoil it just in case um, uh, you guys haven't watched it, but. Um, the acting was good like that's you know it was the acting was really good in it and it was fun to watch it was it was an enjoyable movie um, yes Chrissy I I am actually quite a good cook in in fact um, so yeah uh, I do that I made I made peanut butter cookies also I made peanut butter cookies I think on Friday and then only a couple of them. I only made like uh, like eight, uh, just a really, really small batch because it was a new recipe that I was trying out. Uh, they came out pretty good, but I think the issue was that, um, I don't know, there was a bit too much water in them, and so they flattened quite a bit. And then... Um, I think the I think I may have had the temperature up a bit too high. Uh, so drawing a soft pastel portrait of a famous actor. Now I like the idea of drawing a pastel portrait. The only thing is I'm not I I don't like to do portraits of famous people. And the reason is I don't like the idea of piggybacking on top of the fame of other people. So I don't do I don't I don't do portraits of famous people because I think uh, my position on that is I think that they get way more attention than they already deserve uh, most of the time, in fact. And uh, I don't think that they deserve to be just drawn for free because of their status um, so I like to draw I like to draw just normal people like I have a series on my channel where I draw my subscribers um, I haven't promoted it in quite a while but um, none of my subscribers has asked me to draw them in in uh, goodness in months actually the last time the last subscriber I drew I think was back in January and um, nobody has nobody has asked for me to draw them 
but I've also not really been um, uh, like in the not necessarily the mood to draw anybody but I've been so busy kind of balancing other projects and commissions that uh, I really haven't had time or a chance to to just draw a person for the sake of a subscriber portrait um, plus I don't have my other camera right now so I can't really create those videos that um, that I would normally create for my subscriber portrait video because if you look through my subscriber portrait videos you'll notice that all of my camera work is very um, uh, it's it's unique I guess you could say and so I'm just kind of waiting for my camera to come back to me so that I can make videos like that again Uh, yes, Raph, I could uh, certainly draw you. Draw me. Um, you can uh, feel free to email me um, if you're interested. I mean, like I said, I don't have my camera right now, and I'm. Once I do get my camera, I am going to immediately start filming my. Um, intro to pastel course which I am projecting will take like two weeks to film and then probably another three uh, well probably another two weeks to edit so and go through all the footage and and stuff like that and then prepare uh, to make the course available on my website so there's going to be a lot of work involved when it comes to my um, when it comes to my pastel course and so I'm hoping to just I'm hoping to get that completed as as soon as possible so that I can offer it to people uh, and also launch the Kickstarter to help fund the project so hey, there's just a whole bunch of um, of things gonna be happening once I finally get my my camera back so but you can always um, you can always send me um, a photo of yourself uh, have my email on my about page on my YouTube channel so feel free to email me um, you can also see you can also message me uh, via my website I, I'm I have the link in the description um, you can message me on Facebook or whatnot but yeah um, if you if you do want me to draw you make sure that you have a, you know a, a decent picture as far as quality I need to be able to see your features I I've regrettably had to tell some people in the past that I couldn't I couldn't draw you the picture is just not a high enough quality um, I fortunately I've only had one person get really upset that I couldn't draw them but uh, when you send me a picture that's only this big and I can't see the face of the person and it's just a blurry mess um, there's not really much I can do with that so if you do take the time to send me a photo just uh, you know make sure make sure that I can clearly see your facial features so that I can get it to actually look like you. Um, have I considered trying Faber-Castell -Cast connector pens? No, actually, I I've, I've, uh, don't think I've heard of those. Um, are, I'd Google it right now, but I don't want to just be like playing on my computer while I'm live streaming. I'll have to look those up after after I live stream, unless you can give me a, a synopsis of what what it is, because I've never heard of the uh, connector pins before. All right, let's uh, get this a bit darker here. 
So one of the one of the drawings that I did last week for uh, the Patreon tutorial was of a chocolate Labrador, and I'll have the time lapse for that on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. So in a couple days, um, of course the time lapse for the pastel drawing I did last week and the acrylic painting last week that I did uh, as a live stream. Um, I haven't finished editing those ones yet, but um, most likely next week I'll have I'll have those, and then I'll have um, I'll have another uh, Patreon tutorial time lapse that I'm editing, and that's actually of a cello. Uh, those of you that follow me on Facebook or Instagram or whatnot probably saw that drawing. But that was for that was for a uh, tutorial over on Patreon, where I talk about frequency separation and all that stuff that I was mentioning just a moment ago. Um, but yeah, so those those are available over there if anybody's interested. And I think the cello tutorial on frequency separation is like two hours long. I actually lost track of time while I was um, while I was live streaming that because I was being so thorough or I was trying to be so thorough in what my technique was for coloring wood grain that uh, I just uh, completely got lost in the drawing because I was having so much fun with fun with it. Um, Okay, so the connector pens are just uh, cheap Faber-Castell markers. Oh, I never, yeah, I never heard of them before. Uh, Raf, um, what do I think of your eye drawing? Um, well, do you do you have a? Why well, I, I don't think that you can share links. Um, I'm not. Are you referring to the eye drawing that's on your little um, logo there on your uh, by your name? Because I can't really see it clearly. It's it's really small on my screen, so I can't really give you um, very good feedback on s something so so small. I considered, I considered doing something like uh, if you draw something and then you send me a picture, then maybe I would do um, like um, kind of a critique, I guess. I know uh, Lisa does it over on her channel, uh, and it was something that I was considering doing, but I didn't want it to come off as though just because she does it, I'll do it. Um, but um, I mean, I, I already kind of do it to those that send me their drawings and they ask me for input. I kind of just do it via Facebook message or something like that. But I don't get a whole lot of people uh, sending me stuff, which is probably a good thing because I, do, I don't really have all that time. Um, yeah, Raph, you can, you can uh, message me uh, the picture of the eye you have drawn if you want uh, but like I was just explaining I I can't guarantee that I'll have uh, all that much time to dedicate to a, a critique Um, for my cookies, depending upon if I use baking soda or baking powder, the amount will affect the spread and rise, respectively. Uh, yes, I, I am aware that the amount of baking soda, baking powder, uh, flour, and liquid that you use, those three kind of factor into the, um, also the oil that you use. If you have, if you have oil... Uh, that has a lot of water mixed into it, then you can kind of get an evaporation that creates a flatter cookie, stuff like that. 
um, my regular the peanut butter cookies that I made though they were three ingredients they had uh, banana peanut butter and sh brown sugar um, with a little bit of flax and rice milk um, I used the flax and rice milk mixed in with the banana to kind of create um, an egg texture but I think the rice milk had a bit too much water in it which is why it flattened um, I should do some critiques yeah uh, I maybe maybe I can't can't guarantee that I will but uh, I was actually considering asking Lisa if she wanted not necessarily help doing the critiques but maybe uh, splitting off and she could uh, I could get I, I know that uh, she does like this um, this submission on her website where you submit your your work to be critiqued or whatnot and it's kind of like a release form for her to use your artwork on her channel and whatnot um, and I considered asking her if she would uh, like me to start doing some of those critiques on her behalf somewhat on her behalf because i know there is probably quite a waiting list over on her channel for your work to be critiqued and it would just kind of help alleviate some of that um that that wait that waiting list because actually if you go back through her critiques she actually critiqued one of my drawings that was like one of the first drawings that's on my channel. It was like maybe the fourth or fifth video on my channel. It was a drawing of a horse. And uh, she did a critique on her channel. And that was kind of like the, that was, that was really inspiring to me because at that time, um, yeah, I had been following her for a year or two. At, and goodness, that was like, already three years ago so I've, I've been on Lisa's channel pretty much since the beginning <laughs> um, but uh, yeah and so it was really nice to have a critique from her and uh, so it would be it'd be kind of fun to have gone basically from a student to helping her critique other people's work uh, I just think that would be kind of kind of a a cool perspective um, but I don't know I like I said I don't really have the time right now to even do critiques for the very few people that would message me so I don't know if I, I have the capacity at this moment to add that kind of uh, video to my weekly schedule I'm, I'm still trying to uh, kind of get my weekly schedule in set in stone because I've, I've been kind of all over the place the past few weeks uh, and really uh, just trying to upload as many videos as possible which is not usually the uh, the technique that I recommend uh, for YouTube channels but it's just kind of been all over the place and I haven't really been able to help it because I've been doing a lot of live streams recently and I've just been having so much fun with them that I don't want to stop. But the truth is I'm kind of running out of things to draw that I can comfortably complete on a live stream. But yeah. Um, regarding my journal book, what is the tooth like and how many layers would I get on this paper? Um, so this is many people are familiar with this sketchbook this is just the Strathmore toned tan paper um, it's 80 pounds or 118 grams per meter squared um, this is a smaller one so this is the five and a half by eight and a half inch and uh, 400 series so you can pick these up pretty cheaply and pretty much just every art store they're pretty common they also have a toned gray one um, and this paper this paper's pretty thin it's only 80 pounds so it's it's fairly thin but it has 
it has a pretty nice rigidity to it. You know, it's 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 much thicker uh, and much better feeling than just plain old uh, printer paper that you'd use to print things out from the computer. But with that said, um, there are some limitations to the paper as far as um, amount of layers that you can put on and, and whatnot. But in actuality, um, I have fully maxed this paper out and it is, th this paper continues to amaze me sometimes uh, because I have used watercolor pencils on this paper and used water to blend them out. I have used, um, I have doused this paper in odorless paint thinners to blend. Um, I've used markers on this paper. Uh, let me show you a couple of the drawings that I have here that I've used markers. So here, uh, this this drawing in particular, let me zoom out a little bit. So this this drawing in particular, I put like five or six layers of markers on this paper. Um, and you can see that it, it, it bled through quite a bit. Um, but in regards to the paper staying intact and being um, fine with it, like, it, it, the paper really, really held up for how wet I got this paper. And these black bars, this is actually um, ink that I brushed on. So it was, it was just soaking wet uh, with ink and alcohol. Uh, and the paper just holds up beautifully. I mean, you can, maybe you can see, but there's no warping on this paper. There's no warping anywhere. The paper is still very smooth. Uh, and this is another drawing here that I did where all of this is marker um, and completely saturated with marker. Um, and there's no warping or any indication that the paper struggled to uh, handle the marker. Now, I don't have any drawings, uh, I think. Um, I don't have any drawings in here that I used uh, any alcohol to, or any paint thinner to blend. Um, but I do have, I, I have this drawing. Okay, so this, this is where I, this is a drawing that I maxed out the amount of layers. And for this drawing in particular, the top and bottom here, this is ink, again, very, actually this is marker and ink. So I really saturated this with marker and ink. Um, but the, the amount of layers of Prismacolor pencils that I'd used on this drawing uh, totally maxes out this paper. Um, I don't know if you can see the, the shine on it. Maybe if I, if I get it with the light just right. Yeah, you can kind of see the shine because the wax has has built up so much. I didn't um, I didn't seal this this drawing. Um, that you you I could probably go over it with a pencil right now, and it wouldn't do anything because the wax buildup is so thick that you can't add any more layers to it. So, um, but I got a tremendous amount of layers, like at least seven layers of pencil on this drawing. Um, and seven might not sound like a lot, but for this thin of paper, uh, that is a ton. Um, I can't tell if you, let me zoom in and maybe you can see this a little bit, but you can, you can see that right here where I started adding the highlight, um, you get a little bit of uh, separation where the wax will go on and then the wax won't go on, so it's not perfectly smooth. Now that's the problem with these smoother papers and once you start to burnish them, you're going to limit, like you're gonna maximize the paper. So you can see uh, also here there's a little, um, a little pit marks where the pencil won't go down anymore. 
and then you can see it here this is where it's most prominent I don't know how well that's going to show up on the camera but there's there's like separation between the dark and the lighter areas where the pencil didn't want to blend out perfectly because it doesn't want to stick to the paper anymore but it took a lot like paper took a beating I tell you what it really did uh, so yeah it's uh, I love this paper I really do I love this paper um, let's see what, what else do I prefer toned gray or tan um, actually to be honest with you I've never used the gray I've never bought the gray version of this sketchbook I still have I don't have too much left in here but I don't even think I'm halfway through it yet I've had this sketchbook for a while but um, even though this was this is like the official drawing journal um, I haven't yet filled it up uh, hopefully I will have it filled up by the end of this year but um, yeah I've never tried the toned gray the reason I went with the, the tan is because uh, I wanted to practice portraits that was my kind of that was my goal was just to practice portraits and I thought the the uh, the tan went better with skin tones naturally, so I uh, I just gravitated towards the tan paper. Uh, but the I'll probably try the the gray one next, maybe after I finish this sketch this sketchbook. Uh, I will I'll try the the gray one, I suppose. Um, do I know any sketchbooks that would be good for watercolors and pencils of all kinds? Uh, I don't. See, I, I've never done like full watercolor pieces. Uh, I have watercolor pencils, but to be honest with you, I almost never use them. Uh, I haven't even found a watercolor paper I can tolerate because um, even, even like really thick, I've used Archie's, I've used Artistico, I've used um, Canson. Actually, I, I just recently tried Canson, uh, and I'm trying different weights. I'm trying uh, cold pressed, I'm trying uh, hot pressed, and I can't seem to find a watercolor paper that I like with just my watercolor pencils. So, um, yeah, I'm not the right person to ask about watercolors because I haven't quite got into that medium yet. And um, I mean, hopefully in the future I will, but right now I haven't. Um, so that's that's the best I that's the best I got for you there. Sorry. But uh, yeah, this this uh, sketchbook I've I've always been a fan of, and I have I actually have a larger one of this that I've done that that has the larger sheets of paper um, that I do that I use for my subscriber portraits uh, and that's you know just as good I enjoy that one just as much as I enjoy this one um, what do I use for pastels I assume you're referring to paper um, but since I don't know whether you're referring to paper or not I'll just tell you what I use for everything. For the paper, I switch between using UART paper and pastel matte. Those are the two two kinds of paper I like. Um, I've tried the 600, the UART 600, the UART 800, and also the uh, Claire Fontaine pastel matte. Um, I gravitate a little bit towards favoring the um, the UART paper because uh, I feel like it holds on to the pastel on the, the next layers. So say you do a, a full layer of pastels and you blend it out and everything, and then you do more pastel work on top of it. I feel like the, uh, the UART paper holds on to that second layer a little bit better than the pastel mat but I've only used the pastel mat a couple times and 
I haven't quite did a piece on it that I really like. So I'm going to I'm going to keep using it and kind of bouncing back in between those papers until I really find one that uh, you know and that I that I will only use. Eventually, I will only use one of those, but for now, I prefer the UART paper. I also have um, the Canson Mitenta touch paper, which is a uh, it's a primed paper with um, gesso. It's a gesso paper, and um, yeah, it's more textured and meant for pastels. But there, there's two, there's there's two papers by um, Canson. Uh, there's the Canson Mitenta, and then there's the Canson Mitenta Touch. And when I first tried the Canson Mitenta paper, I hated it uh, for pastels specifically. I feel like it's more of a practice paper that you don't want to you don't want to put a lot of time into because it it uh, it's garbage for pastels but they have a, uh, a sanded gesso paper called Mitenta touch and I haven't tried it yet but I have a couple sheets in my drawer over there and I, I intend to test it out soon um, but when you're working with pastels I would say like the paper is probably more important than the brand of the pastels you use, to be honest with you, because um, it makes that much of a difference. But uh, yes, you're welcome. I'm... Uh, yes, the the Canson Mitenta regular paper. It has this really strange texture to it. I, I know what you're talking about. And no matter how many layers of the pastels you use on it, they still have like these kind of like these round circles that show through from the texture of the paper. Um, and so, yeah, that's and it doesn't hold. It doesn't hold layers of, of pastels nearly as much as the um, the UART and the pastel matte paper does. Alright, let's see. I know there's some more colors I need to add here. I think I need uh, 145. Let me find 145. There we go. Yeah, I think when when I was starting out, actually when I started my channel, um, I didn't even know the importance that paper played um, in drawings. And I didn't care. I would go to the art store and, you know, I would find whatever said drawing paper and I would just get whatever was cheapest and I never paid any attention to paper and I didn't realize how important paper was whether you're working with pastels although I wasn't working at pastels at that time um, but working with graphite or colored pencils because that's where I kind of started with is graphite and and then I moved into colored pencil and um, it was very eye-opening when I reached a certain level with my colored pencil work that made me realize just how important the paper was. And uh, I, 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 finally, I finally got to a point with my colored pencil work that I realized um, that I can't do any more on this on this drawing because the paper is holding me back and so that's when I 
that's when I started to look in. I just like Googled art paper and what's the difference and there's all these names and it's super confusing and I don't know what to do with them. What is Valium? What is Bristol? What is, you know, why watercolor paper? And um, so that's when I kind of went on this artistic journey and just searched out a bunch of different papers that I tested with uh, colored pencils and other mixed medium because I realized that um, I was never going to really f be able to reach my my full potential with colored pencils or markers or even graphite for that matter unless I found a paper that accommodated what I was trying to do. So um, yeah, don't uh, don't underestimate don't underestimate paper because it's it's very important. Um, yeah, so uh, you can you can put you can mix gesso with a bit of water and like brush it onto paper and then you can take you know 600 grit sandpaper and and sand it smooth so if you're if you're limited to your paper choice in regards to working with pastel you can always kind of create your own surface um, I have I I don't have uh, any necessity of doing that fortunately for me uh, because I can I can order my paper from from the UK and have it sent to sent to me here in Poland but um, yeah I can imagine the frustration looking for for good paper I mean even though I had plenty of options it was still hard for me to find the paper that was right for me um, because I think that's also an important thing to realize is that the paper that I like and the paper that I would recommend to people depending on what they want to do um, isn't necessarily going to be the paper that you're going to like all that much you know you might end up hating the paper but um, at least I can you know save a few people the headache of of searching for a good paper or save them some money from telling them not to go with a, a particular paper. Because I, I paper has been kind of a conversation for the past like year and a half really on my channel. Uh, what paper I use is, is a very common uh, question that I get asked and I think part of it is um, some people have this idea that you have to have like the best like the best of something to to create good art um, and the the truth is if you go back on my channel after I had been on YouTube for like a year so if you go like into a, a year into my channel you you're gonna be able to find some good artwork I have to say some because my personal opinion uh, is that there's very there's very limited but regardless I did a lot of drawings on just like really bad paper and um, they some of them still came out really good even though the paper uh, was was garbage and and it just you know, I was working with Prismacolor pencils on really cheap, flimsy, just super cheap paper that uh, couldn't handle anything really. It was just, it was just sketch paper, and uh, I was still able to create some pretty decent stuff. So, you know, I don't, I don't tell people to go out and buy luminance pencils or even by polychromos pencils you know if if somebody was like hey I wanna start using colored pencils what should I get 
I would tell them to get Prismacolor, and I would tell them, you know, just just grab a sketchbook and and learn, practice some techniques. Don't go out spending a thousand dollars on really great paper and the best pencils you can find because you might end up not even really liking the medium all that much. So that's kind of yeah, that's kind of my rant about about uh, the gear that artists use and stuff like that. I mean, I've I'm I'm uh, I can officially call myself a professional artist because all of my all of my income that sustains my living comes from me creating art and um, even though it's very little I have to emphasize that, that I'm living off of a very little amount um, I, uh, I just now got polychromos pencils and I've been working with colored pencils for three years now and I worked with them for two years before I got my luminance pencils and I worked with my luminance pencils for an entire year before I got polychromos so I got this far so uh, hello CC glad you uh, came to the live stream who else did I miss uh, artista I don't know if I said hello to you, but hello everybody. Um, goodness, some, some, quite a bit of chat has come in. Uh, yeah, so how long since I am? How long since I'm a full-time artist? Uh, so I have been, I officially, uh, I officially said that I am a full-time artist last September. I could, I could show you the video. It's on my channel. Uh, if you go back, it's, it's in the old drawing journal series and it's just, uh, the thumbnail is a picture of me and I think the title is just thank you. Uh, and it's a it's a drawing journal that really doesn't even have any drawings uh, or any drawing in it because um, I, I recorded the video outside and basically it was thanking all of the people that were a part of my channel up to that point and it was me announcing that I was going to take time off school to pursue art full-time and that's what I've been doing since so I've really only been doing this or trying to do this for um, about six months I guess you could say maybe yeah like about six months or so um, and uh, yeah so I'm six six months into this as a full-time artist um, thank you Victoria I, I appreciate that um, I, if, if I don't if I don't accomplish anything with my art at the very least I hope that I can in, inspire uh, a few people to you know follow their their dreams and do whatever they want because that's what I'm doing I'm just I'm just doing what I want <laughs> I'm trying to do what I want anyway but like I mentioned at the the very beginning um, uh, this past week has just been fantastic for my art um, I, I've, I remember when I can, I got up to like 20 Patreon supporters and I was like, yes, I got up to 20. And then, uh, I got up to 29 and for the past couple months, it's kind of been floating around 29 and 27. Like I would wake up one day and I'd see that somebody deleted their, their pledge on Patreon. I was like, oh man. And then, and then another person would delete it, and and then I would get one new person back. And so it's just kind of been going back and forth. And I was like, man, I'm never going to see 30 people. 30 people. I can't find 30 people to support me on Patreon. Um, and then this past week, I just totally blew that out of the water. Um, I Actually, this past weekend, I got four new patrons uh subscribers uh which was just 
it was just a great way to to spend the weekend is just getting these emails of people that decided to support me over there um, and it's just been really really great um, and uh, so things things are moving forward which is just um, just awesome like it's it's uh, it's a really good feeling to to start seeing the growth that's necessary so that I can continue um, to do this full time because I, I like to share all the information that I can uh, and teach you know everything that I know and and, and learn uh, along the way so um so let's see i got a question here two-part question living in poland do i miss anything from the states okay artista i remember your question uh during the during the uh last week's live stream for i think it was during the uh um i can't even remember during the pastel live stream and i wanted to keep it more focused on the pastel thing um Let's see, if, if I left Poland, what would you miss there? Let me answer that question first. Okay, so if I, if I were to leave Poland, uh, hello, Crossing Cat. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I am uh, getting started on your commission. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Crossing Cat in the chats right now, he uh, kindly commissioned me to do a painting. I have the... Uh, I have everything prepped sitting beside me and actually uh, I'm just waiting for my camera to come back because I don't want to just record a, a boring plain time lapse from the top down I want to I want to make a fun video so I need my other camera to do that so I I haven't forgot it's just uh, I need my camera back <laughs> uh, Yes. Yeah, so what I would for, what I would miss from Poland, I would miss the convenience of not having to own a car. I would miss the convenience of not owning to have a car. I can get anywhere I want in Poland, no problem. It's so easy. Um, uh, yes. Yes, I, I'm excited to uh, for you to get the painting once I'm finished as well, Crossing Cat. Uh, it is a totally blind commission, so he commissioned me to do a painting with a very uh, vague uh, kind of theme. So it's kind of like a spacey theme, uh, but that's it. As far as as far as any details, he has no idea what's going to happen with the painting, so I look forward. And it's kind of going to be a, a somewhat of a collaborated effort between our two channels a little bit because he's going to, I'm going to mail him the finished painting and he's going to open it up and we are all going to get to see his reaction when he, uh, when he gets the painting. And I look forward to that video. Um, I look forward to getting started on the painting as well, as much as I look forward to getting my camera back. <laughs> so, yes. Um, yeah, so that's one of the things. Uh, one moment, Charlotte, I will get to that question. I, I don't remember the last time I got that question um, about my prices. Uh, so, that's one of the things I'll miss about Poland. The other thing I'll miss about Poland is how cheap it is uh, in comparison. I have to say in comparison because if you directly, like, uh, instead of converting US dollar to złote, um, and you just compare it side by side, then really there's no price difference. Um, but since I work th basically kind of through the US, since I get paid in, in dollars and that's where my money comes from, then converting it makes it very cheap to live here. And so that's something that I would miss once if I leave Poland. Um, 
Uh, the other thing that I think I'd miss about Poland is just the the atmosphere that I have here because um, I don't know I kind of get like this this old school feeling about everything here uh, all of the cars are manual tra transmission and it just uh, and the the people just seem to be more down to earth because the country is much poorer than the US um, it, I don't know. It, it's kind of hard to explain, but it just kind of feels like I went back in time. I kind of feel like I'm, I don't know, maybe in the the, the 40s, I guess, uh, but with some modern technology. That's. But as far as like the people's personality and just the vibe that I get from living here, it just that's what it feels like to me. And uh, even though I have no experience living in the 40s, I just kind of, that's just kind of how I feel. And I, I think I would miss that because in the U.S., I just get, uh, I guess it's just too individualistic for my, my taste. Uh, this is the best way I can put it. Uh, but getting back, uh, living in Poland, what do I miss about the States? Uh, that's... I think that, uh, yeah, I, I miss things like uh, school shootings. I miss things like going outside, not feeling safe. No, I, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but seriously, like, um, I miss my family. Like, and that's about it. Other than that, I don't miss anything. Maybe, maybe certain conveniences and food selection so because the united states is a bit more rich and capitalistic uh there's quite a bit more selection when it comes to vegan things uh, but poland has given me a lot in terms of my vegan lifestyle because now i i have to cook like i have to cook a lot more here than i did back in the states because there was there was more vegan options, you know, I could go to the, the, the freezer section and, and get a, a vegan pizza or vegan ice cream, things that I shouldn't be eating, but because they're convenient, I can. I apologize, I'm not drawing very much, I'm trying to answer, I'm trying to answer a bunch of questions, and when I get into these, these talks, uh, sometimes I forget that this is called the drawing journal, and then I just sit here and you guys look at this fish and it doesn't change or anything like that so let me grab a pencil really quick I think I'm gonna grab this one let me double check the color um, yeah this is the pencil I want and I'm just gonna start drawing some scales I guess let's see here I want to uh, Uh, okay, so I got some. I know I missed a few questions. Hold on a second. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> what do I charge for commissions? Totally depends. Uh, I can't I can't give you a number because it's it's the the variation in what I charge is such a variable that it depends on on so many factors of what medium I use, what size, what the subject is. Like for a pet portrait, it's not gonna cost as much as a portrait of a person because for me personally, drawing animals is very easy, whereas drawing people is much more of a challenge. Um, and I charge differently based on that. I don't do this crazy thing where, you know, you charge by like the square inch or, or whatever. Um, I find that completely um, uh, unsuitable for for myself. It, it, it for some people it's perhaps very practical. Uh, another thing I don't do is I don't do it an hourly rate because, to be honest with you, if I did an hourly rate, my prices would be four times as high as what I charge, um, which actually kind of sounds nice, but then I'd get no clients. Um, 
uh sorry i missed a whole bunch of chat because i was just like rambling on about stuff <laughs> uh let's see let's see let's see okay victoria thinks she knows what i mean as the the easy uh, the u.s having the easy life whereas yeah i i think you're right i think that's a good way to put it the u.s kind of has an easy life whereas here in poland th you, you gotta work like people here gotta work for stuff we don't have all this like fancy electronic stuff that makes our life easy um i have a i have a food processor in an oven but the oven is just one of those ovens that you plug in it sits on top of my refrigerator um, I don't actually have a, like a, an actual oven um, uh, I ne I've never seen anybody with a dishwasher here um, nobody dries their clothes we hang our clothes up in fact I have clothes hanging up on our little rack like right beside me pretty much um, we, I've never seen a, a dryer here, so, um, air conditioning, eh, yeah, there's not really air conditioning here either. Um, most of the buildings are very old. The building I'm living in, fortunately, it's renovated, but, uh, uh, and it's rather new. It's only 40 years old, but, uh, when I first moved here, I was living with my, then girlfriend and it, at her mom's place but her mom was living in germany it's complicated but i don't want to get into those details uh but i'm i'm doing it again i'm doing it again i gotta i'm not drawing anything you guys got too many questions <laughs> uh hello ultramarine blue uh yes i am vegan i've been vegan for eight years uh Holy crap, I can't keep up. <laughs> uh, it's fun and interesting to watch me talk. I do appreciate that. Maybe I should switch these screens, make me bigger, and make this drawing smaller since I'm not doing anything with it. Um, t -t -t -t. Uh, thank you, Crossing Cat. I'm glad you like the fish. Uh, watercolor pencils. Uh, I have watercolor pencils, the Faber-Castell set. I bought the full set, but I only bought the full set because it was for a commission, so I charged for the pencils, um, and I've only used them like four times. Um, but yeah, I don't really like them, to be honest with you. I think they're... Uh, I think they're... I think they're terrible. Uh, I don't... I think probably because I haven't quite found a paper that I like. <laughs> um, anyways, did I miss anything? I hope I didn't miss anything. If I did, just ask me again. But I'm going to try to to draw some fish scales here. I'm going to sketch out kind of where these fish to scales are going to go. And uh, yeah, that's going to be my strategy here. Uh, one of the things, so one of the TV shows that I've kind of just recently got into because I started watching it this weekend with my wife is American Crime Stories. And the first season is dedicated to the O.J. Simpson case. And so it's, oh gosh, it was, it's really quite good. I'm, I'm excited about it. it. We're halfway through the first season. Um, and I guess each season does a different, like, American crime or whatever. But it's actually really entertaining. And uh, sometimes I like to talk about TV shows or movies that I that I watch um, so that's that's what I'm watching right now and it's pretty it's pretty cool it's enjoyable for sure I definitely recommend it although there's a there's like a episode six episode six is a little weird because uh, I'm kind of 
I like when movies and stuff I like to look at the the way it's filmed like the camera movements and and the lighting and how they shoot sequences and I just felt like um I just felt like it was it was shot really weird there was a there was a few sequences in that episode and I was like what are they doing like this is so awkward and it bothered me so much that in that in the middle of the episode I was like I gotta find out what happened with this episode and it turns out there was a different director for that episode um and I was like I knew it I knew there was something about this episode that was just off and it was just it was funny that I was that I was able to identify that the the director of that particular episode was different just because of the way it was shot but uh, yeah it was it was a fun fun series so far uh Okay, so Peach, I think you're referring to the watercolor pencils. Um, now, I don't want to scare you away from the watercolor pencils, but if you're thinking about buying them, I would, I would lean farther away from some just going out and buying the full set because I think the full set is like $200 or something ridiculous. Um, I would recommend just going to the art store, grab like, you know, three. Get like three uh, colors I would say get um, get three of your favorite colors, but vary them in um, uh, value. So maybe get like get like a light blue, maybe a uh, maybe a dark green, and um, I don't know a purple. Maybe like a a mid range like a like a mid range purple color. Just get three, okay. Um, and if you already have watercolor paper, then you're good. Go home, play with those three pencils, and just figure out if you like what they do. Because um, I personally, I don't like what they do. Like you, you, you know, you use it like a regular pencil, and it barely works as a regular pencil. Um, and then you take a brush with some water, and you brush it out, and there's a few other different techniques. And... Uh, yeah, I don't like them, but that's just me. You could end up loving them and be like, well, now I'm going to go buy the full set and I got these three extra pencils just because. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to scare you away from them just because of my opinion. You know, go out and buy three of them, something like that. Uh, the, um, the uh, yeah, the Faber-Castell ones you're referring to, they are very light fast they're pretty much the best watercolor pencils that you can get i still don't like them <laughs> um what do i like to use more on strathmore sketch paper polychromos or prismas uh right now i don't i don't know uh, that's what this fish is supposed to tell me because this is well hold on a second so i did this uh Quaka, Quoka, Quaka, uh, with the Fabric Castell, and I like the way that it blended out. So I wanted to try something a bit different. That's why I'm doing the fish. I wanted to try something with some vibrancy in the color because usually with this tan paper, it tones down your saturation quite a bit when you use color on top of it. But uh, I'm enjoying it. I like it, and um, right now I can't really say I have a preference. Uh, oh no, Anne, I hope, yeah, uh, well, I hope that you like the watercolor pencils, um, <laughs> since you bought the full set of them. You're kind of stuck with them. Mine sit over in that drawer, and like I said, I've used it like five times, and I have really no, um, a desire to use them, because I don't like the effect that I get with them. Oh. Uh, Though, I, like I mentioned, I haven't found the right paper. Uh, oh, hey, Harry. Thanks for uh, coming by the live stream. It's good to, good to have you here. It's, it's going really well, actually. Let's see. Q. 
Cuba Gooding Jr. Yes, that is. Uh, he's one of the actors in the um, the American Crime series or stories, whatever, whatever it's called. Yeah, 155 euro. Yeah, so that's that's a lot for pencils that I really hope that you like. I do. I hope that you like them, but I don't like them. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome, Peach. Hopefully, hopefully you buy them and you love them. Uh, because it's always nice when you find a medium that you love. Like, some people, they don't want to use pastels. They don't like pastels, but I could honestly probably go bankrupt buying pastels because I love them so much. So, it's personal preference. It's not like a, it's not like I'm going to kick you off the live stream because you like watercolor pencils or something ridiculous. I just don't like them. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, you could, I mean, you could use them to create kind of like an underlayer or something. And uh, I'm trying to think of where I used them that I could probably show you. But yeah, I've, uh, one of my really old tutorials that, uh, its title is How to Color Everything. In that tutorial, I used the watercolor pencils, and I, I only used the watercolor pencil because it was really quick, but uh, I didn't like them. Oh yes, the uh, Faber-Castell pit pencils, those are, those are nice little pencils to have. I'm gonna get back to drawing now. You guys gotta stop you guys gotta stop bothering me so much. It's ridiculous. Can't even draw with all you guys bugging me. It's ridiculous. Let me be. Let me do some drawing. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm gonna try to create some some scales here, and I'm just gonna go really slow. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure on the pencil or anything like that just kind of create some indents where the scales are and create the shadows that are coming from them and they're basically just little dots next to each other Oh, that's that's. I'm glad to hear that, Ultramarine. Uh, yeah, I'm. It's it's kind of a double-edged sword. Like even if I was in the United States, you know, there'd be a lot more people uh, that would kind of be able to come over to my live streams. But I I'm getting a lot of following here in um, like this area, especially the UK and more of the. Uh, English speaking parts of Europe but uh, I, I'm glad that uh, you're in my time zone as well and you can follow my live streams uh, so Peach the Faber Castell soft pastels that I use um, I recommend just getting the like the 48 pack of the half squares it's like twenty dollars or maybe thirty dollars or something like really close and uh for me personally uh thirty dollars is the same price for a pack of the paper that i always use the uh stonehenge paper that i always use so for me it's like it's about the cheapest that you can really get into the the pastels um, so you know make sure make sure you do it on good paper though that's the the real key to pastels but if you do try the fabric pastel ones just go with the the small pack of 48 you know and there's no reason to spend a lot of money some stores some stores even sell the pastels you know individually you can just go in buy a few of them 
and just play around with them. Maybe um, get just uh, a couple blues. Just get a couple blues and a white uh, and, you know, make a sky. Just see what you like. See what you think about it. I have I have that one live stream that I did of the sky with the sun and the clouds and stuff. And I just used a couple blues. I did sneak a little bit of gray in there, but uh, mostly it was just blues and white. So, you know, you can you can buy five. I would say five minimum. Uh, a white one, a dark blue, a medium blue, a light blue, and maybe like a grayish blue, and then make a sky. And see if you like them. Uh, they are difficult. Yes, the pit pencils are difficult to sharpen. Although, although, I can recommend a sharpener. And it is the Carbothello sharpener. The Carbothello uh, uh, pastel pencils. If you buy them in a set, you actually get the sharpener, and it's just a teeny tiny little sharpener like this, and it's one that you have to hold over a trash can or a cup and then spin it. Uh, it's over in my drawer over there, so I'm not going to go grab it. But, um, oh my goodness, it, it sharpens so well. I love that for my pit pencils and my Carbothello uh, pencils. Uh, it gets it so sharp like like to the sharpest that you could ever imagine and it's really not that difficult um, so yeah that's the sharpener I recommend for the pastel pencils whether it's the pit pencils or a different pastel pencil they're all really tough to sharpen uh, I want to do portraits with them the pastels I was wondering about that how to sharpen them yeah, so that's the sharpener that I got because I bought the full set of the Carbothello ones and it works like a dream, to be honest with you. I have tried using um, uh, my X-Acto knife, my razor blade, to sharpen my pencils, um, but with that sharpener, the Carbothello one, haven't needed to. It works perfectly. Yep, buying pastels is very addictive. Uh, you can just ask my wife about that one. Um, I disagree. The best way is not a razor blade. Uh, not after I found the Carbothello sharpener. I have to be. I have to be honest with you. Uh, hello, Renate. Renate, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, thanks for coming by the live stream. Uh, so no open stock uh, you'll get the 48 set and see how you go but you do not have to apologize for asking questions I love answering your guys's questions seriously it's so much fun even though you keep me from drawing and I'm gonna try to add a few more circles here but uh, no I, I love I love answering your guys's questions the best that I can um, it's that, that's why I like these live streams. I could literally do these live streams every day, but I can't because I won't. <laughs> um, is it no uh, carb with a with a B? I'll type it in the chat. Uh, carb Othello. There, that's how you spell Carbothello. Uh, yeah, Ultramarine's got it. Yeah, the I don't know how long this sharpener is going to last. However, um, I've used it quite a bit already, uh, and it seems to be working working quite well. But I will keep you updated on whether or not that sharpener stops working. I'll let you know as soon as it does. I mean, it is just a teeny tiny little thing. Um, I can't imagine that it cost more than a pound or a euro or a dollar. 
or four zlata, whatever currency. We probably have like 10 currencies in the chat right now, so I can't really, but... Yeah, so it, it, there's no way they're going to charge that much for it. It's just super small. And honestly, the Carbothello pencils, this was something that was super surprising to me. The Carbothello pencils are actually cheaper than the Faber-Castell Pitt pencils, and they're also rated higher. So um, if you're thinking about, you know, going into some pastel pencils, you might uh, want to compare the Carbothellos to the pit pencils. Um, because when I when I do make my uh, my introduction to uh, pastel video series, I am going to recommend that you get the 12 pack of the Carbothello pencils as opposed to the 12 pack of Faber Castell Pit pencils. Because, for one, it's cheaper. And two, as far as I've been able to discern, the Carbothellos are better quality, better light fastness, just all around better pencils. So, um, definitely. Definitely consider those as you're getting into pastels because that's what I would recommend over the pet pencils. I mean, that was something that was very surprising because I was kind of putting off, um, I was kind of putting off the, like the major purchase of like the higher grade pastel stuff until I got a bit better, a bit more comfortable and decided whether or not just how much I wanted to get into the uh, uh, pastel stuff. But then I saw that the full set of like 60, I think it's 60, uh, Carbothello pencils was very like it was not even a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds or whatever I can't keep track I I have to jump between so many different um, so many different um, currencies that I can't keep track of it anymore uh, but yeah the Carbothellos are good but many of the colors are not light fast yeah I don't um, I haven't quite got that deep into the the pencils yet. Um, I know that I know that quite a bit of certain colors, regardless of what brand you get of pastels, there is a uh, uh, there's a certain correlation between the color uh, and the light fastness. Uh, regardless of what pastels you get so it's it's kind of just a balance and kind of determining what colors you you use versus what colors you avoid for the light fastness purposes but um, to be to be completely honest with you uh, when it comes to like importance like my own personal importance for the products that I use, um, I would say that light fastness is not a a very valued um, component to the purchase of the products that I get. Uh, obviously, when it comes to like professional colored pencils or pastels, um, light fastness generally goes up overall depending on the quality of the product so I focus more on the practical the practical um, um, attributes of the product as opposed to just like oh, it's not very light fastness I'm just going to ignore it um, but it, yeah it's certainly something to think about 
Uh, what is the breakage comparison between the Carbothello and the Pit pencils? Honestly, the density of the the um, pastel pencils is so hard; it's so tough that uh, I didn't I didn't get no breakage at all. If you can break a pastel pencil, then you're strong. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've I haven't had anything break with my pastel pencils because. That's the problem with a good sharpener with the pastel pencils is because they're so hard and you kind of burn through um, sharpeners, I guess. But uh, I haven't had any issues at all with breakage, so with, with either of the pencils. So I have nothing to compare there. That's, that's about it. All right, so goodness, uh, you guys have had some awesome questions. This has been this has been fantastic. I've really enjoyed it. I always look forward to the Monday live streams. I always look forward to the drawing journals. Um, you guys are just so much fun to hang out with and doodle along and just have fun, basically. I will most likely have this drawing finished by next week's live stream uh, for all of your benefit because I've barely done anything to it I feel like uh, but I want to get it complete before next week just because I want to have it done um, He, uh, Charlotte, maybe maybe look at Jackson Art Supply instead of Amazon for that sharpener. That's the only thing I can recommend. Uh, the 12 set of the Carbothello pencils, 18 pounds. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, the Pit Pastels have harder leads. Um, yeah, I don't... I actually I don't know the density differences between the pastel pencils yet. I, I haven't worked with the Carbothellos or the Pit pencils all that much. Um, I've only I've only used them a, li a little bit in my work because I really like to work with the uh, the squares uh, for most of the the drawing process anyway. But uh, yeah, I haven't yet noticed the difference of the like the uh, toughness of the pencil itself uh, oh hello Holly I'm glad that you were able to to wake up and catch a little bit of live stream as well um, oh hey Leontine a um, few of you popping in here I'm actually I don't know how much longer I'm gonna live stream but now that you guys showed up I feel I feel obligated to give you something Ah, nobody else, nobody else come to the live stream. Everybody stay away. Otherwise, I'm going to be on here all day. Um, yep, a little fishy. Uh, this is, um, I've actually, I've never drawn a fish before. This is my first time drawing a fish uh, that I can remember. No, I lie. I did draw somewhat of a fish when I did a colored pencil tutorial about two or three months ago or something when I did a an underwater scene I did a little silhouette of a fish but that's about as close as I got um, yes I would love you to draw a fish Leontine so I expect to see a video very soon on your channel of you doing a fish um, or a picture on Instagram or Facebook wherever I see it first uh, Yes, uh, and definitely do it on toned paper. Go crazy. Have fun. Um, 
what size is this journal? This is the five and a half by eight and a half uh, Strathmore toned tan paper. You, you missed the, the earlier part of the stream um, where I talked about this, this sketchbook uh, because there was a question about it just like you had there, so. Uh, yeah, so I'm just, uh, I'm gonna doodle for a little bit longer, I guess. And um, then I'm gonna jump off here because I have, I have a life to live. I can't live stream my whole life. You guys gotta give me some time off. Uh, I won't be doing, I won't be live streaming every day this week. Um, last week was fun, but by the time Friday rolled around, I was like, oh my goodness, I cannot do this again. Cause I think for, <laughs> I think for, uh, last week, since I live streamed every single day, I had to have live streamed, let's see, at least 10 hours. I had to have, I had to have live streamed for at least 10 hours last week. And that was just, that's a lot. That is a lot. Um, that's like a whole two days worth of sleep. Uh, that I that I live streamed for I mean unless you're one of those people that can sleep for 10 hours I don't uh, no it's I gotta be sick to sleep for 10 hours I'll put a GoPro on my head and just live stream it yeah that's not gonna happen I am I am thinking about doing a video because I mentioned earlier that I've been vegan for eight years and I've actually uh, there's a few of us on YouTube uh, artists specifically that are vegan yeah Christy Cat Knight and uh, Sheldine from Sheldine Fine Art uh, we're vegan I don't know who else is vegan so if you're vegan in the chats you gotta let me know um, and. Uh, yeah, so I was actually thinking about doing kind of a, a an art vegan video just once I get my gosh darn camera back. Oh my gosh, I just, I, I'm getting anxious because I just want my camera back. But uh, yeah, I was thinking about writing something up and and just doing kind of a fun video and then maybe sharing one of my my recipes. And then also, okay, so I don't have any plans for next week's live stream. So before I jump off here uh, and go about living my life, if you guys can let me live my life for a little bit, um, for next week's live stream, uh, well, I don't know if it's next week or the following week. I know, I know, my wife has another day off, and I just finished talking about how everybody in Poland has to work because they do, um, but they love having days off work, so they always have it. But there, she's going to be having another day off work, or actually two days, if I'm not mistaken. And I was thinking about doing like a live stream with the two of us. Uh, possibly the two of us drawing um, and kind of if you guys wanted to ask us questions or something like that if you would be interested you have to let me know now okay you have to let me know now if you think you might be interested in that um, of course I have to ask Anna if she would be interested in it too but if you guys would be interested uh, Anna is always welcome. Uh, what camcorder do I recommend? Well, what part of the world are you in? Um, that what camcorder? So for for live streams, what camcorder do I recommend? I have to recommend this one uh, for live streams anyway. Uh, yes, interested. Okay, that's that's a couple of you there. Um, this is the first camcorder I've ever owned, so I can't really. 
I'm kind of biased in the sense that this one works really well for me. Uh, okay, so it seems the consensus is in. You guys want to have a drawing journal with my wife and myself. I'll have to figure out some way to set it up so that we can both draw. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, sometimes when we draw together on the weekend, like she has a, her own desk over there, and um, we, I just move it here beside my table, and then we just hang out and draw and doodle. She's she's coloring something uh, from Easter actually, because I drew that little bunny. Uh, on Easter and she was doodling a little uh, line art thing and um, she started coloring it with some of my markers but she hasn't had much time after she gets home from work to continue it but uh, I always enjoy I always enjoy sitting down and drawing with my my wife um, we always have fun just drawing together and actually I was thinking about another video that would um, that she would do and uh, a while back ago I'm trying to think of when this was I think it was back in September or something like that she asked me to teach her how to use colored pencils or whatnot and so I did a like a tutorial I, I found a reference photo of just a still life of a pear or whatnot on uh, on Google Images, and I was like, okay, we're gonna draw this. And I'm gonna just show you how to draw it. And I walked her through like the entire process. She drew the whole thing, she colored the whole thing. I never touched her drawing or whatnot, but then I did the same drawing. We did it side by side with Prismacolors, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And um, she did she did really good. Uh, it was her first drawing ever. And I sat next to her the whole time, and I was like, nope, you have to press harder with the pencil, put more color on there, blend that out, blah, blah, blah. Um, and uh, she drew a pretty realistic pair uh, for the amount of time that we spent. Like, I didn't, we didn't spend hours and hours working on the piece, but she did really good for her very first colored pencil piece. Um, I, should, I, I should have had that prepared. Uh, to show you, but uh, she has it on her blog, which I should know her blog by heart as far as the website. She's going to hear this later, and I'm going to pay for it that I don't know it, but she just spent like all weekend uh, updating her blog and posting all these, all of these uh, drawings and things that she's she's done in the past six months. Uh, a lot of the doodles that we've done together, uh, she just posted them, and uh, it would be fun to kind of incorporate her into the channel. In fact, I need to, I need to just get her her own YouTube channel, and she can, when I'm not recording a video, she can sit here and record her own time lapse videos, upload it onto her channel. I think that'd be fun. But yeah, when when she has the next Monday off, I don't know if it is next week. Um, I think it might be in two weeks or something like that. I'll I'll try to set it up so that we can both both do the live stream together and uh, draw and maybe maybe even have her on camera. I don't know. It, that will be up to her. I won't obviously force her to uh, to go on camera for any extended period of time. She's not nearly as used to it as I am. When it's surprising how used to it I am, to be honest with you, because um, I'm I'm really actually quite introverted. But I feel like I every time I get on camera, I kind of do a performance, and I don't know. Maybe it's partly because I'm just talking to a camera lens, but I I see all you guys in the chat, and so it disassociates me with talking in front of actual people but uh, yeah I think it will be fun I will try to get her on camera or on the live stream so you can you can hear us bickering <laughs> we always we always do that when 
when we're drawing together, we always like bicker and have fun. But she's fantastic. I think, I think it would do everybody a, a service to to uh, spend some time with my my lovely wife on a live stream because she's so she's so sweet. She's wonderful. I uh, I keep her all to myself though, so it's not fair. It's it's unfortunate that we live so far away from the rest of my family because even my own family doesn't know how wonderful my wife is because they they only got like a few days with her um, when we were traveling when I when I actually moved out here to Poland so they didn't get a lot of time to get to know her and and just just see how great she is so maybe a live stream of us will. Uh, will be nice. Can't draw with you as I'm taking a bath. That is interesting. I don't know if I've uh, had anybody else taking a bath while listening to my live streams. Thank you for that image. Oh, goodness. All right, so this fish is coming along uh, a little bit better. It's got some texture to it now. It's got a little bit of texture. Maybe zoom in a bit. One of the things that I'm, I don't know why I'm struggling with, but uh, I'm not, I'm not adding enough value to the fish to make it come off the page. So hopefully I can uh, escape my color fear if I work on it for a little bit longer. But it's coming together. I, I really like these colors. I, I hope that on the screen it's showing the colors. They're, they're much more vibrant in person. Like these yellow and blue combination is just um, a lot of fun to play with. Well, it's relaxing to watch other people draw. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I sometimes I'll just uh, click on a live stream of of another artist, whether it's uh, Lisa from Lock Fine Art or Sheldine, um, their their streams. I, I enjoy listening to them and just watching the progress or whatnot. Um, anyway, I think that's gonna. I think I'm gonna to have to call it for today. Um, I didn't really get nearly as much done as I was hoping, <laughs> uh, but I enjoyed this live stream regardless. I hope everybody that was part of it uh, enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed your questions. It was fun answering them. Hopefully I gave you some uh, insightful information or useful information and whatnot, but uh, tomorrow I don't have, I don't have a video planned for tomorrow, but I do have a video that I finished editing this morning, which was the painting of the bird. So maybe I'll just upload that video and have it go, uh, have it be uploaded tomorrow. Uh, but I do have, um, a time lapse of one of the live streams that I did over on Patreon. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, um, every week I do a private live stream over on Patreon, which is specific uh, to teaching. Uh, it, they're usually an hour long, but I think last week they were like two hours long. And that's where I talk you through. I actually finish a drawing. So sometimes it can take pretty long, but I also give you the reference photo. I create a digital color palette that you can uh, visually see. You can download it. Uh, I give you the exact pencils that I'm using. I talk you through from the very beginning to the very end. Uh, so that's what I do over on Patreon, but I also recorded the process and then I created a time lapse and I'm going to have that on Wednesday. And that's kind of the, the new, direction I'm going every 
I, I plan on doing a tutorial on Patreon every Friday. That's kind of my that's kind of my goal. I'm trying to I'm trying to work out my my weekly schedule so that I can create more um, more regularly at least. And then the following week I will share the time lapse with everyone. So that's what I that's what I offer over on Patreon. If anybody is watching and interested in that, um, and then uh, what else? So I don't have a live stream like I don't have a pastel piece scheduled right now, but I am thinking that I might do another pastel live stream this Thursday. Uh, can't guarantee it, but if you see uh, if you see the video scheduled out you'll probably see it tomorrow Wednesday at the latest if I haven't decided by Wednesday then most likely I won't have one but possibly uh, but don't get your hopes up uh, what else yeah that's pretty much it I'm still waiting for my camera to be re repaired and sent back to me so as far as the progress on doing the introduction to, to uh, the introduction to pastel uh, video series that's hasn't gone anywhere yet um, it's still gonna happen once I get my camera back um, other than that uh, I'm super grateful for everybody uh, that came by the live stream I will see you next week and uh, maybe we'll have a special guest who knows either way thanks again and I'll see you next time take care peace